Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, we continue in this session our discussion about the importance of education and cultural uh, awareness, developing a culture of human rights and, and look at how we might continue to build on the public awareness um, that has developed during this uh, in, uh, consultation and, um, and, and build on a culture of human rights. Uh, the individuals um, up on the stage for this session all work for organisations uh, who have a central platform of public education and advocacy for law reform, in addition to the other things that they do. They are Graham Innes, the Hu uh, Human Rights Commissioner and Commissioner for Disabilities, Celia Rebel uh, from the Environmental Defenders, Phil Lynch from the Human Rights Legal Resources Centre, and Dr. Pa Sorry, <laughs> Dr. Paula Gerber from the Castan Centre for Human Rights Law. Sorry, the additional person on your left threw me. <laughs> uh, well, welcome to you all. So, Graham Minnis, please start. Thanks, Mary, and uh, I acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. The Australian Human Rights Commission supports a Human Rights Act for Australia. It would set out in a single document the human rights that all people in Australia are entitled to enjoy and the responsibilities we have to respect the rights of others. If we had a Human Rights Act, politicians, public servants and judges would all need to learn about human rights because they'd have to apply those principles in their decision making. But a Human Rights Act will not alone magically create a rights aware and a rights uh, respecting culture. We'll need institutions such as the Human Rights Commission to play an active role in the promotion and protection of human rights. We'll also need a strong and ongoing national program of human rights education. Much that the Commission does is about education, the development of teaching tools for schools, national inquiries finding systemic human rights breaches, annual social justice reports highlighting pressing Indigenous rights issues, guidelines for employers on reducing sexual harassment, submissions to Parliament about amending laws to ensure human rights compliance, media comments on human rights, just to name a few. Your committee asked questions about whether the government should enhance the Commission's role. Should the jurisdiction of the Commission be expanded to inquire into and conciliate a broader range of human rights complaints? Our answer, yes. Should the Commission have a greater role in scrutinising legislation for human rights compatibility? Our answer, yes. How should the Government respond to the Commission's recommendations, such as those contained in Commission reports that are tabled in Parliament? Our answer, formally and promptly. So how do these answers relate to human rights education and creating a human rights culture? One of the Commission's important functions is to investigate and conciliate complaints of discrimination and human rights breaches. This process can lead to broad community education about human rights. For example, an employer the subject of a disability discrimination complaint might initially be irritated by a complaint about wheelchair access of their workplace. But our research shows that many employers and complainants learn much about providing access and the benefits it can bring for example, an employee can come back to work after a skiing accident weeks earlier because of the wheelchair can get in the door. So an individual complaint has a broad-reaching impact. Currently, the Commission's human rights jurisdiction is defined quite narrowly. We can't investigate human rights complaints under the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, the Convention Against Torture, or the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Extending our jurisdiction to economic, social and cultural rights would be particularly important if these human rights were excluded from a Human Rights Act. The Commission could investigate and conciliate complaints, the outcomes of which could have a far-reaching positive effect for ordinary Australians. And can I add in here thanks to Jim Wallace for his support of a self-initiation function for organisations such as the Commission. You are right, Jim disadvantaged and marginalised people do find it hard to complain. Human rights breaches can be prevented from occurring if bills are examined to make sure they comply with human rights before they're passed. 
the Commission could use its substantial expertise in examining bills for their human rights compatibility. But for this to be most useful, we'd need the power to initiate examinations. Currently, we can only examine bills at the request of a minister, a request that has never, to my knowledge, been made. And if examination occurs, the government is not required to do anything about it. So any law giving us a power to scrutinise bills should require the tabling of the Commission's findings and the government response within a specified time period. That segues to your third question how the government should respond to the reports we make uh, about individual human rights complaints, inquiries into systemic human rights issues, such as the last resort report uh, into children in immigration detention, the annual social justice report and native title report. The government should have to tell the Australian community how it will address recommendations we make. Now let me be clear, we're not suggesting that we should have power to compel government to comply with our recommendations. But the effectiveness of our work is diminished if the government can just ignore it. Requiring a public response creates a public dialogue about these issues. That's another part of human rights education. Our submission outlines other areas where we could contribute more to a human rights culture. The power to intervene, as of right, in cases that raise significant human rights issues could assist courts. Investment in a national human rights education program could increase the impact of our education work. Finally, we highlight our decreasing funding. If our work is to increase, we will need adequate resources. A Human Rights Act would create greater public awareness of the importance of human rights to the lives of all of us. Whether or not we get one, human rights education should be significantly enhanced. Education of the broader community, federal public servants, administrative decision makers and schools and universities. The Commission could play an important role in making this happen. Our resources for secondary schools could, with adequate funding, be expanded and distributed more widely. Human rights in Australia will be better protected and promoted by a strong Human Rights Commission and comprehensive human rights education. I hope these, along with the Human Rights Act, will result from this consultation because we need to bring human rights home. Thanks very much.